And that, Ben, is how you solder. Awesome. We're running out of time, though. we got to get ready. Go get the book. All right, let's find out what this important message is here. Hey everybody, Josh, KI6NAZ. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Belka DX, a cute radio. It's hard to think of a radio as cute, but this one is. It is super, super tiny. It is a shortwave listening radio. So this is just a receiver. I say just, but this has some fantastic features that are packed into it. And we're going to take a look at them today on the Ham Radio Crash Course. You know, immediately when this Belka DX jumped out at me, I thought, spy radio, clandestine radio, like a Cold War number station listening, you know, in Berlin, crazy radio that you would hide in some kind of device and you'd be able to receive messages and whatnot. Uh, this thing is really, really interesting. And there are a ton of really valuable shortwave listening features, but also due to its size, there are some lacking features that you might not expect to not be here, but really it's the size that precludes a lot of that. Right off the top, this is a $120 radio if you purchase it through the designer's website, and he is EU1ME. I will post the link in the description for that website. You can also purchase it through MobyMax. I believe both of them come from Belarus. I know the, crea the creator, when he ships it, it comes from Belarus. With MobyMax, you pay more. You pay close to $200, and that does include FedEx shipping. There is no other option other than FedEx. So you pay you know, $70, $80 in some cases, depending on the price. Sometimes the price shifts a little bit if you go with the creator versus MobyMax. I purchased this through MobyMax. I did purchase it. I'm not affiliated with any of this. I just found the size of this thing to be fascinating, and I had to get my hands on it and tell you all about it. From a spec standpoint, this is a 1.5 megahertz to 30 megahertz shortwave listening radio. It does AM, which you would expect. It also does single sideband. The very interesting part of this radio is that it does CW as well and has adjustable filters and a tone adjustment that you can do for it. Now in the world of shortwave listening, until you step up to like a ham radio or a more general coverage receiver that is a little bit bigger, the portable shortwave options don't often have a CW feature and this one being this size and having that capability is pretty cool. There are two AM modes. AM1 is a envelope detector and AM2 is a pseudo synchronous detector. Now, for some of you asking what that is, I'm going to do a demonstration because I think hearing is believing and we're going to see if we can tell much of a difference between those two modes. Now, what do you give up <laughs> when you pack those features into something this big? Well, there's no speaker. You got to use headphones with this or an external speaker, which is what I'm going to do the demonstration with. After shooting this video, I found out that the creator has developed a back panel that includes a speaker. So that's a bit of an upgrade that you can do. You bet I'll be buying one and doing it. And I found out from Thomas, the curator of SWLING, which is a great blog. Link will be in the description for all the links, but it'll include Thomas's wonderful website as well. Thanks, Thomas. Also, this doesn't have a scan capability. So if you are kind of like me, I'm a turn it on to scan mode, set it and forget it and walk away kind of guy and then come back and hear what stations I picked up. For those of you that like actually going in and working the VFO and, and finding stations and rolling around, you're gonna like this, I think. There is an internal battery. I have put this in a bag, a bag that goes in my car, stays with me, call it a get home bag, if you will. It's been in there for weeks, battery's fully charged. It doesn't seem to deplete the battery at all. And when running, it lasts for a very long time. With that said, it does have a micro USB, so you can quickly get it charged up if you're operating remote, you have an external battery bank, or running off of a small solar panel. An interesting feature this does have is an IQ output. 
So you can connect this to something like an SDR dongle or something along those lines, connect it to a computer and you could see the waterfall uh, of what this is picking up. Okay, let's talk about the Belka DX. We've got a power button, memory button, mod button, and volume button. And the VFO dial is also a clicky button that you will definitely be using. Let's start it up. Hold down power for two seconds. Comes up with the screen. This is set to WWV. The backlight is controllable. You can set this to um, backlight off, backlight always on, and then backlight in an intermittent mode where it will go off after 12 seconds. And if you adjust something or click a button, it'll come back on. Now I mentioned that this is a um, no speaker in this bad boy. The speaker port for headphones is right here. So I'm gonna connect a little mini speaker and I'm gonna run a couple of antennas actually we're gonna we're gonna try out here okay so first up is WWV you can hear it right now Coordinated universal time. at the tone three hours 50 minutes coordinated universal time Now starting on the top, volume. Obviously you can you can adjust the volume pretty easily with this, but if you click it again, you get sensitivity. Let me show you the difference between the sensitivity. Let's pump the volume a little bit. Okay. Sensitivity low, let's go high. Now for tuning around, basically, you can click the button, the wheel, once, and this allows you to change the step, the tuning step in Hertz. I have it at 1K right now, and I'll show you what that looks like. So let's get out of that, and you can start scanning through the bands. Now, same thing if I click it, I can change the tuning step, but if I click and hold and rotate, we'll get a way faster scanning through the band. So check this out. Now I'm already in 40 meter ham radio, and that's how you can jump around really quickly. Okay, so volume, VFO, under mod, click mod, this is where you have your Morse code, your CW, lower sideband, upper sideband, AM1, AM2, narrow FM, and then that's your, your mode selections available on this radio. If you select one and then hit mod again, this allows you to set your cutoff, which is kind of like your filtering for AM. 3.5 is generally what I leave this on, and this is your AM low cutoff. So you can do a high and a low, and so you can actually go in here and, and tune it out pretty, pretty well. Again, there's only a few options you need, and, and this seems to have most of them. Let's find a strong AM station to test out that AM1 versus AM2. Okay, this is AM1. Let's change it to AM2. All right, very good. How does it sound, though, on sideband for you ham radio operators? So I'm going to set the high to 2.4, single sideband. Leave the low at 100 is fine. Uh, let's go back up, and you can just fast scan your way up. I can't understand what you're saying. It looks like propagation is dying for 40 meters tonight. I'm sorry, and uh, but I'll say 73 is I hope to uh, catch on a band some other time. A Whiskey 4 Yankee Juliet, or was that a November 4 Yankee Juliet? W4 Yankee Juliet. Well, I'd say that sounds pretty good. Let's hop over to uh, 80 meters and see if we can find anybody. Now, for the sakes of, the, of this review, I, I am using this uh, cheapy, just as USB chargeable, um, you know, wired speaker. I, I would recommend, though, you get, you know, a, a cheapy little pair of earbuds. It sounds much better in earbuds. Although, I got to say, it sounds good on this little speaker here. So, you know, consider that. 
Now let's take a listen to how it sounds on the CW setting. Now showing off the memory feature, pretty straightforward. Click where you want it to go, say load. So you could change to whatever you want, but let's say, see it jump to the mode that I was using, which is CW, which is not what I wanted here, it was just an example. But um, if I go back down, let's go back down to WWV here. In fact, let me change it back to AM. Now we want to save it, hit memory, save, save to channel one. So now when we go back in, that will be our next one. And, and we don't have any other memories, although uh, it, I guess it did set some of them. I didn't set any of those. Oh, that's interesting. So some of these are already preset. Hey, that's kind of cool. Anyway, so if we wanted to, we can go to 10, uh, 10 megahertz for WWV. Let's do that. why it's in lower sideband don't know <laughs> but if we change that to am so what do you think about the belka dx i think it is a interesting shortwave listening device it is obviously super super tiny it does not feature a waterfall of any kind there is actually another radio that does that the maha the maja hit or something like that uh, i think this is maybe a little bit better made uh, but it has less features right no speaker no screen obviously and it's smaller so you decide kind of what you want i again put this in a bag and my whole purpose of this is, you know, that bag stays with me most days. And when I'm at home, I play with this radio and whatnot. Um, but for me, if, you know, there's some kind of emergency or whatever, I'm not generally probably going to be throwing up an HF uh, antenna to work 40 meters at night or whatever. I've got VHF, UHF comms that I would be more relying on. But I absolutely would rely on something like a small shortwave listener. And this is probably one of the smallest that you can get that's well-made, solid construction rechargeable battery, um, et cetera, et cetera, that you, you could use, I think, successfully in the field. The adjustable whip, telescopic whip is great. It is BNC, so you can just use any antenna you've got around or set up or happen upon. Um, yeah, so I bought it, right? <laughs> I, I, think it's, I think it's super cool. The audio quality is really good. It seems to do very well for both shortwave listening stations and the amateur stations for the sidebands, upper sideband, lower sideband, and I was surprised by the Morse code, the CW modes that this runs as well. So what do you think? I'd love to hear your comments in the field below. Go ahead and leave them now. If you enjoyed this, give me a thumbs up. It does tell the YouTube algorithm that you like this type of video or you like this one in particular. Consider subscribing and then click the bell and I'll notify you every time I post a video or go live. I'm Josh KI6NAZ. You've been watching the Ham Radio Crash Course, and I'll talk to you later. See ya.